Hi guys, welcome to Train Forever. I'm Andrew Barr and today we are talking about rest breaks. Specifically, how long should you rest between your sets? For any question like this, the answer is always, it depends. It depends on training phase, training goal, the exercise that you're doing. You simply can't say that you know 30 seconds is the best rest length or two minutes is the best rest length. We need to use critical thinking and examine our training variables to come up with the best answer for each situation. But the main point I wanna get across today is that shorter rest lengths are not by definition better. There's a surprisingly prevalent line of thinking out there right now that where people wear short rest lengths like some kind of badge of honor. But rest breaks are an essential part of training. If we didn't need them, we wouldn't program them. You would just train continuously and get your workout done in 20 to 25 minutes. So why do we need a rest break? What's the real basis for taking a break between sets? If we're going to distill it down to its essence, it's to allow you to do high quality work in the next set. And that means lifting the prescribed weight for the prescribed number of reps with good technique. Depending on what you're doing, that might only take 30 seconds, but it might also take five minutes or more. Most of the time, it's going to be somewhere between one to two minutes. Are there reasons or instances why we might deliberately choose a shorter rest break? Absolutely. One example is if we're trying to drive muscle hypertrophy through metabolic stress. Uh, rest break is an opportunity for the body to clear uh, metabolites or waste products and a shorter rest break is going to be a shorter window of time for that to happen. So in, when, when you get into your next working set, uh, you will still have some metabolites and you'll accumulate more in that set. So it's one technique to use uh, to drive metabolic stress which can stimulate hypertrophy. But metabolic stress is not the only way that we can drive hypertrophy. We can also do it through load, tension, volume, other training variables. And short rest breaks are also not the only way to drive metabolic stress. If you take longer rest breaks and, can, and still do intense high rep work for a given number of sets, you can absolutely accumulate metabolic stress that way as well. So although shorter rest breaks can be used intelligently to stimulate hypertrophy through the mechanism of metabolic stress, it's certainly not the only way to do that. Another reason why we might choose a shorter rest break is if your workout is focused on conditioning or you're doing circuit style training where you do five or six or even more exercises in quick succession and you're placing an emphasis on keeping your heart rate elevated. In these instances, it absolutely makes sense to keep the, heart, or the rest breaks brief, but it's important to understand that this style of training, although perfectly valid, is secondary or ancillary in its very nature. It is rarely or if ever the right choice to build your program on a foundation of these conditioning type circuits. They're best meant to complement your strength and power work. And uh, this style of training gets a lot of hype because fitness studios and boot camps and places like that will tout this method of training as you know being the most intense or burning the most calories, which even if your goal is weight loss is absolutely the wrong way to conceptualize and approach your training. Um, but it is one, one style of training that, that is valid, just shouldn't be the foundation, and it's an example of where a shorter rest break is the right choice. If you're finding this content useful and informative, go ahead and give me a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your training sessions. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your support. There are benefits to taking longer rest breaks as well. Strength training is hard and lifting something heavy for five reps is hard. And if you do that, it makes sense that it's going to take some time before your body can recover to allow you to do it again with a similar level of intensity and good technique. Uh, again, it varies very much depending on the person and the exercise and many other factors, but two to three minutes between sets is a good catch-all recommendation for strength training. Now, one way that you might make progress is by completing the same training scheme with shorter rest breaks, but this is probably not the best way to make progress. Most lifters will do better by lifting more weight or lifting the same weight for more reps rather than focusing on completing the same training scheme with shorter rest intervals. Anyone with any kind of experience lifting heavy knows that sometimes taking a bit more time between sets can provide real benefit. And there are real physiological processes at work there. One of them is the rephosphorylation of creatine. If you don't know, short bouts of intense work, like weightlifting, are fueled by something called the phosphagen system or the ATP-CP system. And we don't need to get into how all that works, but what is important to know is that after a bout of intense work that depletes that energy store, you recover about 70% of it within 30 seconds, and then 100% of it within three to five minutes. 
if you're really training hard at a high intensity, it makes sense to take time to get 100% of that fuel source back before doing your next set. You can make the case that a rest break should be even longer. Uh, this is something that Pavel Tatsulin talks about when he talks about greasing the groove. But at a certain point, we need to recognize the fact that the vast majority of people have other things to do in their day other than training. So time management is something that we need to consider as well. So can a rest break be too long? Of course it can. Leaving aside the time management piece where you don't necessarily want to be at the gym for two or three hours if you can avoid it, uh, there are real physiological processes going on as well. You know, we, we emphasize the importance of a good warm up. You do your mobility work, you do activation, you do potentiation, you do ramp up sets, and you do that first heavy set. And you've done a lot of work to prepare your body for hard training. If you stand around and look at your phone or talk to your friend for 10 minutes or more, those processes are going to start to reverse. You know, your heart rate's going to come down, you're going to lose those acute potentiating effects. And at the end of the day, you're just not going to be in a situation to lift as heavy as you would be able to otherwise, which could also lead you vulnerable to injury. So the current line of thinking around the best rest break is that the sweet spot is a mix between time management and full recovery with one to three minutes being the right amount the vast majority of the time. I hope you found today's video useful. And if you did, please give me a like, leave a comment and let me know what you think and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another training tip. And if you check out the description, you can find my free guide to building core strength and strength training essentials, my 12 week training program specifically for beginners. And you can find information about my online coaching as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.